Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to my home, Chef Delamore. Uh, working with the wonderful Alex Bland, Middle Country Library. Alex, thank you. Uh, everyone who's checking out a program, amazing vegetarian apps, appetizers. Thank you so much. Uh, you're going to love this program. Let's get started right away with my cauliflower. Okay, so this is a little portion of the cauliflower that I have left over from the, um, the um, piece that I prepared today for us, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, you're going to prepare it like this and then just break it into florets, okay? And we could roast these florets like this in the oven, but I'm gonna show you a cool trick how to roast them even better, okay? I'm gonna take each row, uh, floret here and I'm gonna cut them into thirds, okay? And what this is gonna allow me to do is have a one flat edge and then a round edge. And then in the middle piece, I'm gonna have two flat surfaces or faces that will allow me to roast this cauliflower really nicely. I'm gonna get a nice caramelization on this bottom part here. And when I have the flat pieces like this, the middle pieces, uh, it's gonna roast on both sides, okay? So this just comes like this. Take these and give them a flat edge, all of them, okay? Now, next thing I'm going to do is crack an egg, okay? And I'm only using one egg. For a whole head of cauliflower, you're going to use two eggs, right? And um, <clears throat> I'm going to whisk this up. We could add some milk or some heavy cream. I don't know why you want to do that. Um, almond milk, water to stretch the egg. We just use this like so. I'm going to show you a cool trick to save time. This is going to go in my egg wash, and the whole thing goes in all at once. So we're going to egg and bread these cauliflower and then roast them. But I'm going to show you a cool way to bread them in just about 30 seconds. Before we do that, though, um, I need to coat these with some egg, with my egg wash. And then I'm going to add some delicious spices. I like to add basil, dry basil, dry oregano. And these are in the instructions. But what is not is this turmeric. And I just started adding this. And you notice I'm adding it to my wet mix here. And this is gonna allow the turmeric to really penetrate into the cauliflower and give it a really nice flavor. And, and a, this yellow color is going to come through, believe it or not, through uh, without breadcrumbs on the outside. Okay. A little fresh cracked black pepper. Actually, I, I like that a lot. You can add some uh, red pepper flakes if you like. Make it spicy. And you know, watch this cool trick, guys. Going to take a plastic container, a high wall plastic container, just enough breadcrumbs to coat the bottom of the pan, the bottom of this plastic bowl. Do you see? And then these are going right. Look at these cauliflower. Okay, just so much going on here, so much flavor. These are going to go right in my breadcrumbs for a quick toss. Now watch this, I don't, the rest of this egg is gonna stay on the side because I don't wanna pump up my breadcrumbs. And in exactly 20 seconds, this cauliflower is done. Just by shaking the plastic container with the high wall, it allows the breadcrumbs to bounce off the sides and cover the top. So these are done, look at this, literally done. To bake these, I'm gonna use, you're gonna use your favorite baking sheet. You're gonna use a small nipple uh, opening for your oil and give a nice uh, thin bead of oil on your tray and then place these on the tray and they're gonna go into oven 375. You're in a rush, 400. And what will happen is you will end up with bread, uh, delicious roasted cauliflower. Absolutely, insanely delicious with a salad, with quinoa, with pasta, or as an appetizer. 
really delicious with this is some hot sauce, some Frank's hot sauce. Out of this world. Try it. Okay. So again, these are going to go right on my tray, just like this. Again, just a little bit of oil. You can use uh, extra virgin olive oil, pure olive oil. You can use canola oil if you'd like. And these are going to go in my oven, 375 to 400 degrees after about 20 minutes on one side, because I really want these to cook through nice. 15, 20 minutes on one side. I'm going to pull the tray and I'm just going to turn these over. You're going to see them nice and caramelized on the bottom. Okay. Doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get any healthier. No salt, very little oil. Okay. My next appetizer is my broccoli rob. I want to show you how I prepare it. You know what? Let's get our mushrooms going first and then I'll process the broccoli rob while they're cooking. Okay. So from my broccoli rob, uh, for my mushrooms, I have some button mushrooms, and you don't need to buy the expensive mushrooms. The, the, the uh, Bella, which is the uh, small, um, uh, small brown mushroom, is going to, like the Portobello, it's called the Bella mushroom. Uh, it costs a little bit more, but this button mushroom is going to taste exactly the same. And what I need to do is slice this nice and thinly so that it melts in your mouth and it's going to melt in the pan. And to really change people's perception of these vegetables and fungi, I like to slice everything very thinly. I'm using my amazing ceramic blade here. It's called a slicing knife, smaller than a chef's knife, you see, but super lightweight, never needs sharpening. Now we could cook these mushrooms with some onion, but tonight we're just gonna do it with garlic. I'm gonna show you a little technique that I've come up with of cooking in one pan and building flavor, okay? These appetizers can also double and triple as lunch or dinner or a side dish. You don't have to just use them as an appetizer. Going to allow the mushroom to cook faster. What about a pulling technique with my finger on top of the blade? Now the blade is an extension of my finger. If I take this like this and I make one round side flat, I can lay it flat like this and then I can pull through. Slice very thinly. Okay. Slicing the mushroom here is really important to really maximize the mouthfeel as it's going to just melt um, in your mouth, in your palate. It's going to pick up all the flavor of the garlic and the sun dried tomato I'm going to add. And it's going to be wonderfully soft and soapy combined with this triple toasted bruschetta, okay, that we're going to use here. So this is really just some dish. I love it. We're going to get our pan going here. A little trick. We're going to add our, we're not going to add our balsamic vinegar first. Okay, we're going to add our olive oil first. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Let's get our garlic on. Just enough oil, again, to coat the bottom. We're not gonna fry these mushrooms. We're just gonna saute them in garlic and oil. But we are gonna use a little bit more um, oil than usual because the mushrooms soak up the oil and it just gives it tremendous flavor, okay? Let's get this going here. Uh, I've got my garlic peeled. So I'm gonna take a couple cloves at once. Very thinly. It's going right in my pan. I want I want a lot of garlic to flavor this onion, to flavor this um, mushroom, and what we're going to do is we're going to flavor this oil with that garlic. 
What about some sun-dried tomatoes? Okay, this is optional. I love to cook sun-dried with the um, garlic, with the mushrooms. It adds a nice sweetness, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. Okay, but it is optional. If you want to add fresh tomatoes to this, you can do that, but you'd add those at the very end. Okay. I make sure the garlic's not burning. I watch it. I use my ears. I use my sense of smell, sight. And if it's burning at all, I take it off the heat and just do this. And this is a great little trick to learn, okay? So you're infusing the oil with the flavor of the sun-dried and the garlic, okay, without it burning. This uh, is ready to rock. So I'm gonna introduce these mushrooms here like so. Now we have a perfectly uh, flavored oil, our garlic, sun-dried tomatoes. Now I'm gonna coat the mushrooms with the oil mixture here. We're gonna add a little dry uh, basil some dry oregano, and then some balsamic vinegar to this. You could add some cumin, dry cumin if we like, if you like. Okay. Okay. So again, the mushroom has absorbed the oil. There's no, no oil in the bottom of the pan. We're gonna make sure it's not burning and let it cook. Some fresh cracked black pepper, if you, and want to add salt to this, you go right ahead. Not adding any salt. I'm just adding some nice seasonings and uh, my palate doesn't desire extra salt. So we make sure that it's not burning by flipping it. Also coat it nicely. We're gonna add a little bit more oil. No butter. And we'll let them cook a little bit. Okay. Now, let's. I want to show you what I do with the broccoli raw because this is one of my favorite vegetables. And I want you to see how many flowers I got out of this bunch. So this is a great ratio of florets or flowers to leaves. Okay, and the stems are not that long either. Okay. Now, what this is the way I choose the broccoli raw. Which one has the most flowers? Now I'm going to cook each one, each, <clears throat> each part of the broccoli rub. I'm going to cook three different ways. The stem, I'm going to take my knife like so. And if it's split on the ends, I'm going to just slice through it. But these are not, these are nice. I'm going to sort, I'm going to boil these in some water, reserve the water to drink because it has a lot of phytochemicals, nutraceuticals, antioxidants. And I'll also use the water that I cook these, that I boiled with and to cook the broccoli raw. Okay. So I'm going to use the stem here for that and prepare it in that way. Now I'm going to take these perfect size for a fork and for a piece of bread, the broccoli raw flowers. You see? And these are going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to cut off the end. Six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 flowers in one bunch, it's plus $3. 24, 25. And you notice I'm cutting off the end so it's not too big. You see, this is the way I like to cook this flour. 27, 28, 29, 30 flowers. Right here, I'm gonna get sauteed. And the leaves here, I'm going to save and I'm gonna use these for, I can add this to the dish which is traditionally done, or I like to chop these up and serve these tomorrow morning with uh, an omelet.
Okay, so I'm going to reserve these. Oh, I, okay, I'm going to put these right over here. I have a Tupperware ready to take it. Okay, so I boil the stems, make them nice and soft. I cut them into one inch pieces, then boil them. When they're ready, when they're cooked through, I add them to the saute with the broccoli raw florets and the leaves. For boiling the stems, cook, cooks them faster and we don't overcook the delicate flour, okay? And again, this is what I love about the broccoli raw. Look at this beautiful flower, 30 of them in one punch. Okay. And this broccoli raw literally costs $3 and cheap. Okay, so my mushrooms are cooking down beautifully. And I'm gonna speed up the caramelization by adding a little balsamic vinegar, okay? Just enough to disperse throughout the pan and then I let it sit. You notice I'm not flipping it, I'm not using the spoon to move it. The reason being is I want a glaze, a film of balsamic vinegar to form on the bottom of the pan. Uh, and that's gonna allow this uh, mushroom and sun-dried tomato mix to glaze perfectly, uh, to caramelize perfectly, okay? We're gonna flip this, make sure it's not burning. Let it cook a little bit more and then you're gonna see the color just go crazy, okay? All right, let's do this. Put these, you see that they're starting to turn a little bit darker brown, and that's what we want. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's do this next. I'm gonna add, uh, well, let's finish cooking this down. And then I'm going to show you what I like to do with the broccoli. Perfectly, it smells amazing. Let's take the bowl here and do this in our bowl. Now, a little trick here. Watch this. I'm going to split this pan in two. Letting the mushrooms continue to cook as I prepare some more garlic for my broccoli raw. Let's slice three cloves at once. Okay. Going right in my pan. The mushrooms are continuing to do their thing. Caramelizing away. I'm going to add a little oil on this side. For my broccoli raw. Now I'm going to introduce that right here, right now. And what I've done is I've turned my pan into two pans. I'm letting the mushrooms continue to cook, soften and caramelize further. And I started my broccoli raw. Okay. And my garlic. Now these are done, so I'm going to take these out. And I'm going to use the pan to finish my broccoli. Now, vegetarians love these recipes because there's so much flavor. Uh, remember, these uh, pairings of garlic and sun dried tomato gives us big flavor. And the umami, the mouthfeel and texture of the broccoli raw is divine combined with mushrooms. Okay. Cook this broccoli raw perfectly. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. Okay. And a little bit more olive. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh garlic while it's cooking. It's going to give us a little bit more of that fresh garlic flavor. Now, I don't add any salt to this. Instead, I just add some fresh cracked black pepper. Which really brings big flavor to the 
broccoli. We have a little bit more oil here. Just a little bit more of the flavor. And one last thing I'm going to do. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to add a little bit of water to the bottom of this pan. I'm going to show you a cool trick. To prevent the garlic from burning, you add a little bit of water and then cover. Okay. And what we're going to do here is now continue to steam the broccoli raw. And the, again, the water is providing the moisture for the steaming. It's also preventing the garlic and uh, broccoli rub on the bottom from burning. And it's gonna also produce a verdant green broccoli rub. You're gonna see it's bright green after this step with the steaming, okay? I can turn up my uh, gas a little bit. I don't have to worry about it burning because of that water. I'm gonna check on it. See the color, it's bright green. My God, oh man, does it smell good. And the water is gonna cook off completely and we're gonna end up with perfectly cooked, soft stems, but not overdone florets, flowers, which are very sensitive. So that's the trick with the broccoli rock. Uh, some people are, don't like broccoli rabe because they say it's too bitter. Well, it can be prepared incorrectly and it can be bitter. With the proper amount of oil, garlic, and fresh cracked black pepper, uh, and it cooked nice and through all the way, it comes out perfect every time, and it's not bitter. Okay, so this is how I like to plate this. I'm gonna take my triple toasted sesame seeded Italian bread. So extra crunchy here, okay? And you can do this ahead of time. And you can have a nice appetizer tray for your, <clears throat> party for your family, okay? So I'm gonna take my mushroom, it's gonna go right on one of my breads with my sun-dried tomato mix. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. Okay, how I didn't eat all of this before this presentation, because I, I it was just so, it looked so delicious. I did of course try a couple and they were absolutely delicious. These can be served. Now, these are absolutely delectable with the bread, without the bread. Again, with some hot sauce or sriracha. Uh, really, this is an amazing chicken substitute. If you've, if you've never tried the egg and bread and baked cauliflower, you're in for a surprise. Okay, let's check. Look at the color that this steaming produces. Look at the color. And this broccoli rob is holding together perfectly. The garlic is not burnt. We have maximum flavor. And we're gonna plate this up in just a minute. Let me, let me just take one for our plating. Oh my God. And you can tell when you put your fork through the stem. I mean, these are so soft. And you see that the flour fits perfectly on the bread when I cut it to size. Another one here, like so. Oh man. Okay, I have really uh, tried to perfect this broccoli rob by cooking with the leaves separate from the flowers. Again, the burning green from the steaming. Here is my plate of delicious <laughs> vegetarian sides or appetizers. My uh, baked or roasted cauliflower with a little turmeric in addition to the uh, basil, dry basil, dry oregano, fresh cracked black pepper. I got my beautifully green perfectly cooked broccoli rod florets along with my mushrooms and sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, I'm gonna open 
I want to say thank you so much for checking out this amazing program, Amazing Vegetarian Appetizers. My name is Chef Delamore with The Power of Food. Thanks again. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Some questions. Any questions? Comments? Let's uh, open it up to our uh, wonderful participants. Anyone? Okay. Let's see what we got here on this chat. Most of it's for me. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, uh, I want to just say thank you again, Alex. I would love a comment if people like the. Uh, the recipe and the program, just give us a like, uh, thumbs up, tell a friend about it. Thank All right, there we go. There we go. Wonderful. Alex, I hope that you enjoyed this. Yeah. A close up. I want everybody to see the close up of the plate one more time. Look at how's that. that. How's that look, Alex? Looks good. I, I wish that's what I was going home to. Totally vegetarian. <laughs> uh, so much going on there. Thank you. Um, does broccoli, Rob, taste like regular broccoli from Heather? Yeah, no, now when you saute with the garlic and oil and the black pepper adds a lot. So make sure you add the black pepper. Um, yeah, and a lot of people said they don't have a lot of experience with cooking broccoli, Rob. So this was a good choice uh, to show them, you know. What it's all about, Alex. You and I have put together a great programming that's new, healthy, always healthy, not a stitch of salt, no butter. I'm going to say peace out. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Be well.